Again, welcome to Introduction to Data Science, lecture number two. In these lectures, we are going to discuss about data uh, and again, different types of data. So our main objective is understanding the most granular representation of data within a computer. Also describe a data set, understand some basic R functions to build a data set. Uh, so again, representation of data within a computer. We know computers normally understand one type of language, which is a uh, machine language. And these terms are normally, or the data are normally organized in a binary form. So it would be zero ones, zero ones, etc. cetera. And we may soon discuss about that. So first let's start with the data types. So we have a structured data. Example of a structured data can be tables, and also unstructured data that can be a free test. So a structured data is the most important data types for us as we will be using it for most of the exercise in our course. We are going to focus more on a, a data from Excel or CSV that is command separated values test files um, for most of our exercise. Already we have seen it in a couple of times uh, in our previous lectures. Uh, we discussed about uh, the height and the weight data set. I think we saw it on lecture number one, that's the last slide. And uh, we said we were trying to find the relationship between a person's weight and his height. This is a structured data because we can see the data is organized in a table form. We have the rows and column. Rows represent one patient at a time or one person at a time. The columns are the attributes or the characteristics of each patient or a person, the row. So we may discuss about that. And also unstructured data is the data without labels. And we saw the table have labels. That is, we have the attribute names, and each record again represents a row. But a structured data again is a data without uh, labels, uh, la labels. And we may again go detail on that. But again, we have more challenges with unstructured data. Structured data are very easy to again analyze or uh, go through the data preparation. But unstructured data, since there are lack of structure. They don't have a well-organized form, no types. So lack of structure makes compilation and also organizing unstructured data a time and also energy consuming task. The preparation for unstructured data get consume a lot of times, take a lot of times. So it will be say uh, more easy to derive insight from unstructured data if, it's, if it could be instantly transformed into structured data. So those are the two, and we may go detail by this section. So first we start with the types of data sets. And the first is the structured data set. Example is record. So we have a rational records, normally will be in the form of uh, tables. Uh, like again, the lecture one data set we saw weights and heights. We also have a data matrix, which if it's two dimension is the same as a table. Sometimes we may have more than two dimension. Also, we have a document data. Actually, an example of a document data, we can see it right here. For example, here we have uh, three documents. Our goal is we want to find a similarity between these three documents. The only way we can find a similarity between documents is to see if the content of the documents are the same. That's what we mean by finding a similarity between two or more documents. The content are the same. So how can we know that the content are the same? It depends on the, the words that are in. So here, for example, we have come off where, let's say, pray. Document one have five, document two zero, document three zero. Score the word score document one have two, document two have one, document three have one. So, this example of a document test. We also have a transaction data 
a transaction data, this is an example. The TID stands for a transaction ID. So this can be like a supermarket uh, transaction or retail store. So customer one or transaction one, the customer bought bread, Coke and milk. Transaction two, the customer bought beer and bread. Transaction three, beer, Coke, diaper and milk. So again, transaction data is also organized data. Now we move to a graph and network. A graph and network data set are unstructured. They are unstructured data. So we can generate data from World Wide Web, such as a Facebook, uh, Instagram, or the network, so social or information network. Also, we have a chemical data generating molecular structures. These are, again, unorganized. It's more or less like hierarchy of data. Then we also have the ordered type, like example would be a video data, uh, sequence of images, or temporary. Uh, temporary data means a uh, data that goes with time. So most of the time, a uh, temporary data, the x-axis or the horizontal will always be the period of time. If the period of time can be in years, months, weeks. A very good example would be a stock analysis data set. When we are dealing with the stock data, we want to know the time the price went up or down, etc. So temporal data, we may come across it as we progress in this course. Uh, it means a time series, a data that deal with time. Video data, again, we know video is an images, so it's a sequence of images. Uh, video is more or less like taking pictures, but we let the picture move in sequential order. Uh, so it's a, a sequence of images. We also have a sequential data uh, that can be a transaction sequences. As a, we saw the example of this transaction data. We can do an association analysis to find if any of these items goes together. So what I'm trying to say here is that I can analyze these five customer transactions and I'll see that if bread, anytime a customer bread, uh, buy bread, it has a maybe 60% chance or even 100% chance that it may buy a milk or it may buy a Coke. So this is more or less a sequential transaction sequences. Also a very popular sequential data is our genetic data, uh, DNA. So we know DNA consists of AGTC. Uh, the nucleotide AGTC. So a part of a, a, a gene can be AATGCC. And uh, maybe if we know the sequence of this data, maybe we may know what kind of uh, uh, function this gene will perform. So in computational biology or bioinformatics, we do a lot of data analysis using again biological data set, set up, such as DNA sequences or protein sequences. DNA have a four nucleotide, uh, protein has a 20 amino acid. But we can find a sequence because in, in a computational biology, we know every, any gene, every gene performs a specific task. We can know the task or a function of a gene based on the gene sequence. That is the primary uh, sequence, the gene sequence. So also we have the spatial and a spatial data means data that deal with space, like a GPS, biology, uh, geographical space. So we may come across the term spatial data, uh, image, and also multimedia. So we have image data, again, video data. And also the image data is unstructured. It's unstructured. So these are most of our data sets that we may again use some of them as time goes on. So what are the important characteristics of uh, a structuring data? A structuring data, most of the time, we are more concerned by the number of, uh, uh, the number of attributes. A number of attributes or the characteristics of the data will tell us uh, the dimension of the data. Now, if I'm doing data science or data analysis, and I have a data set, 
especially the DNA data set, oh, it can have over 5,000 attributes, dimension. So sometimes when you have a, a data set with high dimension, the algorithm takes very long to make a decision because of the comparisons that uh, you have to go through with all the attributes. So that's what the term case of dimensionality was derived from. When you have high dimensional data, the algorithm runs slowly and most likely also it may not give us accurate uh, result or solution. So there are so many techniques that we can use to reduce the dimension of the data. A very common uh, technique we always use is called a PCA, which is Principal Component Analysis, or CVD, which is Singular Value Dimension. Singular Value Dimension. We may discuss about this when we cover the data preparation process. Uh, on data transformation and normalization process. So again, dimensionality of a data, these are the characteristics of a structured data. One is the dimension, the number of attributes. Second will be the sparsity. Sparsity means only the presence counts. Then resolution. Resolution means the patterns depend on a scale, uh, on a scale. Then distribution. The distribution of data said we can find a descriptive statistics, let's say the centrality, the mean media mode, or the dispersion, how the data varies, so we can find the variance, standard deviation, or the range. So these are again the general characteristics of a data set. Dimensionality of a data set, again, as I said earlier, is the number of attributes that the objects in the data set possess or each patient have number of attributes. So a data with a small number of dimension tend to be more qualitatively than data with a high dimension. Again, the algorithm run faster, make accurate results when the dimension are less. And as we said, the uh, sparsity for some data set such as those with, uh, especially those with the asymmetric features. Yeah, most attributes of an object have a values of zero. In many cases, fewer than 1% of their entries are non-zero. So in practical terms, we say sparsity is an advantage because usually only the non-zero values tend to be what stored and manipulated. This results in a significant, significant savings with respect to computation time and also storage. So all the whole concept is that only the presence will count. And as we said earlier, resolution depends on the scale, the scale. And so it is frequently, again, very possible that to obtain a data at a different level of a resolution, and often the property of the data are different at different resolution. So, and also the centrality and also, again, dispersion. Main goal of a distribution is to understand the data. This average of the data or the middle of the data and how the data varies from the minimum to the maximum. So we go through some of the technologies here. Uh, what is a data set are made of, again, data objects. A data object represents an entity. So an example of a data object can be a patient, a customer, uh, a product, and the list keep going. So example given to us here can be a sales database. In a sales database system, I may have customers or store items or sales information. In a medical database, I may have a patient's information or the treatments available. And also in a university database system, I may have students, uh, professors, maybe textbooks, uh, courses that the school is offering, uh, student financial aid, uh, et cetera. And these are all, again, called the data objects. In statistics, we use the term observation. Observation. And in computer science, we may use the term, or especially database, management system calls, we may use the term tuples. Tuples means records. 
or objects or observation. In machine learning, we may use the term at data points or features. Features is also common. So data objects are described by the attributes. So the attribute to be the characteristics. So for example, I have a customer. Customer is data object. The characteristics of a customer can be the customer address, the customer name, uh, amount is spent in the store. So these are all attributes or the characteristics of the customer. So in a database, the rows will be the data objects and the columns will be the attributes. So again, we said attributes are the characteristics of an object. There are so many terms here. We also use the term dimensions. Dimension, uh, that's what we, the term came from before. Dimensionality. Dimensionality means the number of attributes. So dimensionality case means we have so many dimensions, or in this case, to so many attributes. Again, we use the term features also, or variables. Variables is used a lot, I think, in statistics. Features will be in computer science or machine learning. So attribute definition is a data field representing the characteristics or feature of a data object. So as we said, example can be custom ID, name, address. And we have different types of attributes. So for example, customer ID will be nominal. A nominal data set means a data set that we cannot perform any arithmetic operation on it. The only operation that we can perform is counting. We can count it. And then name also the same thing, it's nominal. I cannot say name plus two names name plus name will give me two names we cannot address also is a nominal and now we can say okay balance customers balance or spending in this case can be quantitative or we can also use the term term ratio ratio scale so those are the types of attributes we have nominal binary the numeric or quantitative Interval scale and ratio scale. Interval scale means when you have a value and you have zero, zero means something. So for example, if I have a, a, a field name, let's say balance or amount, amount equal to zero means I don't have anything. It's, uh, I don't have no money or nothing. So it's a ratio scale. Interval scale means zero means a lot. So a very good example would be the temperature. The weather temperature, when you say zero, it doesn't mean that we don't have no weather, temp we don't have no weather or no temperature. It means it's very cold. So a temperature value will be interval scale because zero means something. And a ratio scale will mean any value that zero means nothing. Example will be a weight of a person. If a person weight is zero, that means it, it doesn't exist and uh, you cannot Puts, even if you put a, a very nano, I mean, something very, very small that we can only see through even a, a nano, let's say nano millimeters, very small. Even if you put it in a scale, there must be some weight. Only we may, we may not see it because it's very small, but based on the unit of the scale, if the unit of the scale is very, very small, we may see the weight. So let's go through those attribute types again. So we say nomina also can be categories or states or name of things. Uh, so name of items, we cannot add or do multiplication or addition. The only thing we can count name of the things. So example here is hair color. My hair color can be black, brown, brown, gray, red, and white. And I can count how many uh, persons or employees have black hair or gray hair, but I can't have them together. Another example would be the marital status, whether you are single or married, or occupation, ID numbers, zip code. So we can see that all these examples we have here, it doesn't make logically uh, sensible to do any arithmetic operation on them. 
accept counting or in, in st statistics we can say to find the mode so the second is binary binary also is a nominal attribute but the keyword is by two by means two so this means we have only two outcome uh, example zero and one in computer two states binary means zero or one we may have a symmetric binary which means both at, uh, outcome equally important example will be gender gender is only two we don't have more than two so it's a binary nominal data male or female also we may have a symmetric binary here we say the outcomes not equally important so example would be a medical test uh, we can have 100 positive only two negative but the keyword binary means you have only two outcome of a scenario so a very good example here gender is male or female medical tests either is positive or negative example yes hiv positive or hiv negative the next we have the ordinal data so ordinal data are normally data that is put in ranking or is in order a very simple example would be student grade we know student grade can be a b c or d or f or ma rankings ma ranking the lowest rank is private then you go to private first class then you go to corporal then you go to sergeant so it's in order or size of a, a shirt or something we start with the medium oh sorry we start with the small medium large maybe extra large then extra extra large so ordinary data means a data that is normally put in order then we talk about the interval data the interval data again as we said we can do arithmetic operation on it but the example given here means temperature zero means something or a calendar date zero means something so there's no true zero point but with ratio we have a inherit zero point a true zero point but both of them are numeric then they can be values but in interval zero means something in ratio zero means nothing now we divide the different types of data into other discrete or continuous attributes so a discrete at in, in statistics and when we talk about distributions etc when we talk about discrete it means the variable or the attribute is based on counting then continuous is based on measurement and the same concept here so let's say for example i have a, a data set and one of my attributes said uh, number of students in a class or number of patients. I will count it. So this is a discrete. And normally the answer will be in the whole number. What we mean is either zero or only one patient, only two. I cannot get 1.2446 patients. But continuous attribute based on measurement. So I can have a weight of a person, it can be 150.0002 kilogram because it's based on measurement. So always the main thing to understand, discrete is associated with a variables or attributes that is based on counting. And continuous is based on, again, measurement. So let's go through here. Here they say discrete, a discrete attribute has only Infinite or count as that's the keyword now countable infinity set of values we count it so example be zip code i can count how many zip codes i have in my data set of customers which means i want to know uh, the zip code areas all my customers came from how many of them so i have to count it i cannot weigh put zip code in a uh, a weight scale to know the weight or measure it we can measure it with a tape or something so a zip code is a very good example of a discrete we have to count it a profession also the same thing we have to count how many professional doctors we have in new york city 
etc or a set of words in collection of documents and he also will say sometimes represented as integer variables and also binary attributes are special case of discrete attributes they only have two outcome now continuous attribute has a real numbers as attribute values example will be temperature height or weight and we can see all these three examples they gave us is based on other measurement or the weight also the same so practically real values can only be measured and represented using infinite number of digits uh, continuous attributes are typically represented as a 40 point variable 40 point means decimal number 40 point variable decimal number so i may have a weight to be or a height to be 5.9 feet uh, weight to be 100.02 pounds or kilogram so continuous values are typically represent as a 40 point variables which means decimal and also discrete normal is integers integer means a whole number so integer variable means a whole number so there are so many ways we can collect data so data collection uh, example we give here is open data collections normally online online we can get so many data and uh, data so open data collections online normally is public so the public can view the data they can assess it accessible and also most of the time these data are described for example if i want to use the data and i'll go to maybe nih that's the national institute of health or uh, cdc most of the data you get there is a data we call it secondary data these are data that is being used has been used by uh, researchers already and maybe they publish their uh, research in cdc but one of the requirements most of these popular websites especially government agencies is that if you if you want us to publish your paper we also want you to give us your data this is also one of the requirements which make it uh, more better for uh, the learning communities uh, because uh, if i if i have a data and i'm able to uh, analyze and uh, maybe let's say genetic data and find the function of a specific genes and i keep data for myself again uh, it's not that good because it's good to share that knowledge with the scientific world or uh, the professional field of that very so data most open data set online they are very useful uh, very educated i mean many high school students even take like bioinformatics or biotechnology class and then let me go online get this real data of many patients uh, maybe disease data set like uh, cancer or some other disease and they will use the software and we have some software called brast or faster this software are bioinformatics software that we can use to analyze dna sequence to find uh, the pattern of a specific dna that consists of some disease so these data are public accessible described reusable uh, as we said it's online any scientist any student can download it and use it over and over again and it's complete and also it's timely always most data have there when you go to the description of the data they will surely tell you when the data was generated what the data was used most of the time they will even tell you the name of the author of the data and also the location uh, what i mean by location the premises or the lab hospital where this data was generated and used so we also have the social media data here we said is the good mind of collecting data example would be the uh, facebook instagram uh, etc then we also have the multimodal data the multimodal data means a data that is in a different form can be in different form so this section we are going to have a special lectures on this section 
which is the data preprocessing. It's a lecture by itself. But here, just for us to have the, the general idea, so just to summarize everything here. So in data preprocessing, that's the most time consuming process of data science, data science or data mining task. Because first we have to generate our data or if the data is available already, like secondary data, then we have to collect the data. Now, when you collect the data, we have to clean the data. Sometimes you may have a data that have a missing values. Sometimes these missing values were generated because the data entry clerk forget to ask the uh, maybe the patients or customers, wherever, wherever is getting the data from, or maybe the customers or the patients refuse to give that information because they feel it's private uh, privacy issue. So we need to handle this missing data. The, the most better way to handle missing data is that we have a policy that if the data set uh, consists only 10% or lesser missing value, we can just ignore it. Or if it's a quantitative data, we can find the average of that very column or the attribute, and then we give the average to the missing. Or if it's a nominal data, then we can find the the mode or count the one the value with the in this case the name with the highest count will, will be used, which is finding the mode. Also, we use the term smoothing the noising data. Noising data means a data with error. For example, they ask a patient, "What is your age?" The patient said it's ten years old by the data entry clerk enter 1,000. We know there's no way that a person can live up to 1,000 years. So this, again, we have to correct it. Then the next is the data integration. So if we have a data from different sources, we have to integrate this data together. Maybe the data may have different formats from different sources. So we have to reformat this data, uh, which is the concept of transformation then we integrate the data. Now, after we transform the data, and it's the same as normalizing the data, we find out maybe the data is too much or too less, we don't know. We can do what we call the data reduction. There are some data science software applications that can do all these tasks for us. Example can be a machine learning application like Weka or Rapid Learner or uh, even uh, MATLAB, SPSS, they all have uh, data preparation uh, features. So data reduction also, that's what it means. Maybe our data is too much and we can reduce. And most of the time we can do data reduction by doing something like a basic consular resampling, to resample the data. Then data discretization means uh, I'll give an example on this. It, 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 the concept of data discretization means I'm converting quantitative data to nominal data or converting uh, integer, I mean, uh, interval or ratio data to nominal. So what we mean by that, let's say I have a data set with a patient age. Age is the attribute. But I have over 1,000 patients and their ages vary from let's say 10 to 90 years. Now we may have a patient name uh, age 10, another 11, 12, 17, 24. So we may have so many different ages. Now, because of my algorithm, uh, I want to make this age very simple. I want to have only three types of age or four, four types of age. So this means I may show that, okay, those from 10 to 30, I will represent as one. Then those from 21 to 42, then 41 to 63, then 61 to 84. So now any, if any patient or a person fall between any of these ages, I'm going to, let's say from 10 to 30, I will write one. So even if you are 20 years old, it's one. If you are 15, it's one. So the whole concept is discretization. So one now, I cannot do an addition on one. One now is a nominal data. It's more or less like a label. 
So it's a Enomina data now. So we talk about the data types, the structured, unstructured, we say the tables, and also the free tests. And most in storing data, we know in the computer system, the CPU main CPU is the brain of the computer, and the main language of the computer is machine language, which is 0101, which we also call binary. So in storing data, we normally store it in bits and bytes. Bits is like a single digit, either zero or one. Bytes normally consist of eight bits, and that's how data is represented. For example, when I go to, uh, I'm going to buy a flash drive or any storage device, you will see that it will tell you that, okay, this storage device or flash drive is two billion, uh, two gigabytes. Two gigabyte means two billion bytes, which means the flash drive can contain two billion characters or symbols or digits. Because in computer system, a symbol or digit or characters is represented by one single byte. And one byte is eight bit. So that's what the eight bit is a byte. And a byte can hold up to 256 combinations. This is American standard code for information interchange. So the last section here, I won't go detail here because my next lectures or the next two lectures so will be introduction to R and also our assignment, the homework assignment is introduction to R. So here, combining bytes into larger structures, we say this is a piece of test. We assign the whole test to a variable on the left side or we say an object. So the arrow, left arrow with a dash means assignment operator in R program. We can also use the equal sign, but in R, the right arrow here means uh, the prompt and the R is ready to accept input. So my test is like a storage or a memory location, which we may use the term variable or object. In R, we normalize the object. So if I type this is a piece of test with this arrow, left arrow and a dash, it means I'm assigning these sentences, which we call, we call a string. A string is any items that is in a double quotation. We are assigning to an object or a variable name my test. Again, we may go detail here uh, in my next lectures where we start with the introduction of R. So combining bytes into a larger structures, we say characters, integer, and fruit. Floating point means, again, decimal values. Integer means a whole number and characters. Then tests store differently than integers. So a test normally will be stored different. And we, we may discuss this more when we cover uh, introduction to R. So integers store differently than also floating point, the type or mode of storage. In R, we use the term mode means the type of data, it can be a decimal value, a whole number, or a character. If we want to know it, we can use the command mode and it to tell us the type. So this is an example creating a data set in R. We use the C function. Sometimes we call it the combination, combine, combination. So if I type C, 43421855, it means I'm having a data set. Again, okay, this is a very simple data set with five values. Now, when you use the C function, all the data in the parenthesis must be the same data type. So here we have integer, a whole number throughout. Now, I can use our command to find the mean of all these values, uh, to find the media, variance or standard deviation. Again, we may discuss that one later. I have another option. I can now use the C and I'm going to combine all this value using the C and store it in my family ages. Store it in my family ages. So my family ages, as we said earlier, is our variable. 
uh, or I'll use the term object, I'll use the term object. So this small is like a data set of 43, 42, 12, 8, and 5. We saw it in my family ages object. So to recap what we learned today, again, we learn what is a data, how data is represented in binary, what is a bit, what is a byte, and also the vectors. Vectors is what we did just how to use the C function that was a vector. The length of the vector will tell us the number of items is in the parentheses. Also the name of the variable to the left side, we have a variable object. And also we discuss about different data types, structured, unstructured, and each example of them. So we are going to end this lecture here. And our next lecture, we will go through the introduction to R. Thank you.